Example 5.10. In this example, we have a horizontal jet of water which exits a nozzle at a uniform speed of 10 feet per second as it strikes a vein and is turned through an angle theta. We need to determine the anchoring force needed to hold this vein stationary if gravity and viscous forces are negligible. Notice that this is a control volume conservation of momentum case is a steady with constant velocities. We start the analysis with the Reynolds transport theorem for uh, momentum conservation, and then this is the form that we're going to use. Notice that because the case is steady, we're able to drop this term, and it's going to be equal to zero. Looking at the vein, we see that there are going to be two different uh, directions in the motion. We have the x-axis and the y-axis. So we need to also rewrite this equation in terms of the two different axes. So for the x-axis, which is going to be the horizontal axis, we are going to write control surface. And the velocity that we have over here is replaced by the velocity in that x-coordinate. And then we write rho v n dA and we keep this as it is and then we do summation of the forces in the x-axis we write exactly the same thing for the y-axis and we write the velocity in the y-axis is lowercase v and then we have rho v and dA and this is the summation of the forces in the y-axis Please note, when we replace, we start only with the first velocity. Then we are going to simplify this based on whether or not the velocity is constant at each one of the control surfaces. Okay, so since we are dealing with forces, we need to be able to draw a free body diagram. The forces that we are going to calculate in this case are the reaction forces. So we represent the pain with a point, and then we're going to have we're going to take them both to be positive, the reaction in the x-axis, and then a reaction in the y-axis. Notice that in this case, gravity and friction are neglected, so these are the only two forces that we have in the system. So the summation of the forces in the x-axis is simply going to be our x, and in the y is simply going to be our y. At this moment, we need to determine the mass flow rates for each one of the control surfaces as well as the velocities in each direction at each of the control surfaces. So we start with 1 and 2. Notice that the velocity is constant at both of the control surfaces so we could simply set that m1 is equal to m2. And we have, in order to calculate the mass flow rate, we use density the velocity going in, so it's, this is the total velocity going in at point 0.1 times the area point 0.1 and we have density, the total velocity, or well, the total magnitude at point 0.2 equal A in the area 2. Notice that the uh, size of the flow has not changed from point 0.1 to point 0.2 so we could neglect those two quantities. And then we also have that the density remains constant since it's an incompressible flow. This indicates that the magnitude of the velocity of the vector number at point one is equal to the magnitude of the velocity at point two. So now let's calculate the velocities for each component at the two points. The velocity in the x component at point 1 is equal to the incoming velocity, which is equal to 10 feet per second. We also know that there is no component in the y, so the y component in the uh, first part is equal to 0. We do the same process, so the x component we know that the magnitude is going to be the total magnitude that we have at the entrance, which is going to be 10 feet per second. And because it's in the x-axis, we need to multiply it by cosine of the angle theta. And the exit in the y component is going to be 10 feet per second.
times sine of the angle theta. And these are the quantities that we will use to replace back into the uh, Reynolds transport theorem for us to be able to calculate the resistances at each one x and y axis. Now that we have the quantities, we're going to replace into these integrals. To simplify this integral, once again, we look into the whether or not the velocities are constant at each one of the control surfaces. If that's the case, then the integral simply becomes a summation in each of the control surfaces of the velocity times the mass flow rate at each one of the control surfaces, and that is going to be equal to the summation of the force. Notice that we are going to have it in, at each one of the axes that you're using in your problem, and we're evaluating at each of the control surfaces. For this problem, we're going to start with the x-axis, and we're going to do control surface 1 and control surface 2, and we simply replace. We say that the velocity in the x-axis for control uh, surface 1 is going to be u1, and the mass flow rate at that point is going to be m1. Notice that I do not put a sign into each one of them. I do that as a secondary part. We do the same thing over here. So this is going to be u2, m2, and that is going to be equal to the summation of the forces in the x-axis. Now let's put sign into this particular uh, velocities and mass flow rates. The velocities the sign of the velocity is given by the coordinate system that you're going to have. In this case, the velo this velocity is going into the right in the x-axis, therefore it's going to be positive. And then we multiply it by the mass flow rate. Because the mass flow rate is going into the control volume, we take it to be negative. We do the same process over here. This has a positive sign. And because this is going out of the control volume, this is going to be positive. Let's do the same process for the y-axis. So the y-axis is going to be V1, M1, and this is V2, M2. And this is equal to the summation of the forces in the y-axis. I go back and put the signs now. This is going to be positive, and this is going to be negative. This is going to be positive because of the direction of the velocity, and this is positive because it's incoming into the control volume. So now let's cancel the terms that we do not need. In this particular case, the only velocity that cancels is V1, since there is no velocity in the y-axis for the incoming flow. So this is equal to zero. So we now write down the information over here, and we say it simply. That is going to be u1 times mass flow rate 1. Notice that I put the negative. This is plus times plus becomes positive. So this is u2, m2. And this is equal to the summation of the forces in the x-axis. We go back to our free body diagram, and we had already written our x. And now we simply write the same information. Notice that we neglect this part, so we just go to the second part. I'm just going to put it over here for consistency. This is m2. And this is reaction and the y-axis. Notice that the problem does not provide us with an angle for the um, vein, how it turns. Uh, however, we could simplify the equations for the reaction using the information that we have. We could say that the reaction in the x-axis is simply going to be rho, the incoming area, the velocity that we have going in, cosine of the angle, minus 1. And we could do the same approximation for the y-axis, and that's going to be rho a1 u1 times sine of the angle. So these are very general formulas that we have for cases of stationary veins in which the incoming velocity is known 
and we could determine the angle of that turn and plug it in into this formula. And this will be the reaction forces that you will obtain. Please note that in this case, we neglect the effect that gravity and friction has on the problem.